Morning routines. What should you do? And what if you're a real estate investor? What should your morning routine look like? We're learning all about that here with Zachary Beach, one of the smart real estate coaches on the Fearless Living podcast. Make sure you rate and review the show if you're on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you want financial freedom, time freedom, and want to leave a legacy for generations to come, you probably have heard real estate investing is the place to do that. But how do you get started? What do you have to do? When's the right time? If you are looking for those answers, you've come to the right place. My name is Kyle Stanley, and this is Fearless Flipping. My mission is to help you learn this business and conquer real estate investing. Hey, welcome into the show. Zachary Beach is our guest today, and you may remember Zach's father-in-law, which was Chris Prefontaine, one of the smart real estate coaches that was here on the show. Chris was talking a lot about a specific real estate strategy, which is creative financing. Zach, being a part of the same team, is focusing on a lot of that, but today he focuses on it with us in regards to your mindset and his morning routine of what he does as a real estate investor that helps him to get his mind right and has helped him to do over basically 100 deals in the last few years. So Zach is going to share with you some gold here that's going to go beyond any sort of strategy. It's going to go straight into how to be able to focus your mind in the real estate world. And if you haven't already, guys, before we jump into the interview, make sure you're going to our page, fearlessflipping.com. Right there on the front page, we've got the Airbnb Profit Calculator. We just plopped that up on the homepage there because so many people have been asking for it. We wanted to make it easier to find. But if you also go to fearlessflipping.com forward slash Airbnb host, not only can you find a way to get the calculator, you can find a way to connect with me and schedule a call with me, and you can learn how to get started in Airbnb. So Let's go ahead and get you over there, but also do that after you listen to this interview with Zachary Beach. Hey guys, welcome into the show. I'm here with Zachary Beach. Uh, you won't recognize Zachary because he's new to the show, but he has a very close tie to someone that we did have on the show, which was Chris Prefontaine, the smart real estate coach, and Zach is a part of Chris's team. We're going to go with a little bit of a different twist today with our conversation, but excited to get to know you, Zach. Thanks so much for being on the show, man. Hey Kyle, I, I'm super grateful to be on. I, I'm uh, excited to bring your audience of value and hopefully everyone gets some really good takeaways here where they can go put an immediate action and, and start to build their real estate business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, so I got to ask the first question. If Chris is the uh, smart real estate coach, does that make you smart real estate coach junior or like what, what's your name? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we go. We went with singular, but I guess we're all we're all wicked smart, right? We're wicked smart coaches here. So um, you can call me junior. I'll take it. He's he's almost double my age, so I'd rather be rather be in the younger stage at this this point in my life. There you go. There you go. Well, hey, uh, first thing I got to do is ask a question. Uh, but before I do, I got to apologize, and our audience needs to hear this because I forgot to prep you on this question. <laughs> but let's hope that you've got something off the top of your mind. Um, strangest or weirdest real estate investing story? Um, does anything come to mind right off the bat here? Uh, I got a good one. <laughs> good. Hey, let's hear it. We like the so, truth. Yeah, so we invest primarily in southern uh, southern New England, so Rhode Island, Connecticut, and uh, southeastern Massachusetts. And I actually had a student fly in, and what we do is we do office visits, and then I take them on appointments because uh, I primarily work with the sellers in our buy and selling entity. So we actually were at a, a property in not the nicest part of Connecticut, uh, and we were looking at the property. And we actually walked into the house and uh, there was weed on the table. Okay. Um, and at that stage, the uh, seller actually brought a, uh, a realtor in as well. So we actually, to, the, she set us up in that aspect of I would have never went on an appointment if I knew a realtor was going to be there as well. So I primarily buy direct from homeowner. Sure. So um, the realtor was really heavily pushing this lady to, to re-sign with her. So I just almost backed off because I didn't care enough to, to get the property under contract at that point. But my, uh, my associate and student was actually taking a picture and the realtor, this little old, this little old lady uh, is the realtor. She's signing the agreement. And in the picture, as they're signing the agreement, there's weed right on the back, right on the back. So he just said, you know, this is, <laughs> this is how, uh, you know, high class drug dealers do their business. With <laughs> well, you know, and uh, is it legalized over there or? Uh, I, don't I don't think it's legal in Connecticut at this point in time. Mass okay. and Rhode Island. Uh, no, Mass is. Rhode Island is not. 
it was just a <laughs> it was an interesting story i've actually had, i have many of them if you want to hear more of them Oh, that's okay. No, that that's awesome. I just think it's funny because, you know, here in California now, it's like, oh, look, weed. And I, I still get some of my cleaners at like my Airbnbs that are like, hey, we found weed. I'm like, guys, it's legal. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not that's a big true. deal anymore. <laughs> that's true. I didn't even think of that. You no, know, I'm talking to a California audience here and yeah. everybody's like, yeah, so what? what's weird about this story? All oh, right? no. Yeah. Hey, we got people listening to us from the Netherlands too. We got them all over the place. So you're, you're good. Um, that's awesome, man. So well, did did you end up getting that deal or did the realtor get it? Oh no, I don't even know if the realtor ended up getting it or not. not it. But it was it was one of those scenarios though too, is I was just booking appointments because we had a fly in. So I wanted to make sure that they got some experience where they could see me in action or see our team in action. Uh, but it was out in the middle of nowhere. I'm actually I'm glad we didn't get it. There you go. Sometimes That's the awesome. best deals are the ones you don't get. That's awesome. Cool. Well, hey. We, uh, we're going to talk about something that I love today, which is going to be um, all about mindset. And before we get into that, you know, I think a lot of people, they listen in a podcast for that reason, but they get tired of hearing, you know, oh, hey, we're talking mindset. We're talking mindset, even though a lot of people do tune into podcasts because that's exactly what they're needing. But before we really jump into that, I need people to really understand where you're coming from so that they can see that really mindset was the thing that completely changed your career path and where you're at today. So can you just, Zach, give us a little bit of a, an overview of where you were, uh, you know, five years ago or even before that, before real estate came across your table? Sure. Yeah. Well, that all the way back to when I was in high school, uh, I graduated in 08. So uh, that may, some to you, I'm old and some to you, I'm really young. Uh, <laughs> so in high school, I was mediocre at best uh, I almost failed out a couple times and I think the only reason why I ended up going to college was because all my teachers in high school said that you know I wasn't going I wasn't gonna be able to so I think I applied to 15 colleges and I got into one and <laughs> it was basically a juco but it was like an overpaid you know junior college uh, okay it was a four year but I made it in um, and then I ended up going to school and then I again I was basically mediocre in college too I just I guess there just wasn't the passion there. Um, Got it. So throughout that time frame, um, well, throughout my my high school years and my college years, I, I definitely battled drug addiction throughout that that time frame as well. So, wow. uh, so yeah, you're talking about lowest of the lows sometimes, uh, you know, mm. through that that part of my life. And then um, and then once I I graduated from college, I didn't have any direction. Um, so what I ended up doing is I just became a bartender. So I started bartending, uh, and where I live is uh, in, in Rhode Island is like a really tourist-driven area. So bartending was, you know, it was, it was a good idea. I made good money, but mm -hmm. at one point in time, uh, I was bartending personal training, uh, and I was just getting so burnt out because you, as you can imagine, you work late nights as a bartender, and then you personal train, so you get up really early in the morning. Um, so I came to a certain point where, I was 24 years old and I went to my father-in-law, Chris, who's been involved in real estate for almost 30 years now. And I just said, Hey, I don't know if I'm going to like real estate. Uh, but at this point in time, it's going to be better than what I'm doing right now. So, you know, to throw on top of the two other gigs I was doing, I started making outbound calls, cold calls to expired lists for, you know, I did that probably for the first year of my career uh, in real estate. And mm -hmm. then uh, just eventually made, made the leap and kind of cut ties from bartending and personal training and went full-time in real estate, uh, April about three years ago. So this April, I don't know when this is going to air, but say April of 2020, I'll be in real estate full-time for four years. That's awesome. So, you know, obviously a lot of low points there in your life. What was like the low, I, I know you kind of just kind of glazed over it there, but what was like that moment when you're like, man, something's got to change. Yeah, I was, uh, I think I was 20, I was just turned 20 years old. Uh, my father passed away like a year before. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I was growing up in a town right outside of Worcester. I mean, I, I was used to using drugs and stuff like that. It didn't seem like it was like a big deal, right? Uh, and then you get to a certain point where I was in college where I just knew like, hey, this isn't, that things aren't going well at this point in time. Right. Uh, so I actually went to my mom and just said, Hey mom, I, I think I got an issue here. I, and then I started going to outpatient therapy um, for a period of months. And then uh, luckily I had a really good support system um, with my family and my friends and was able to get myself out of that. 
um, you know, primarily I've used in pain pills. And my area that I live in uh, is very prevalent. I mean, I, I have friends I grew up in high school. At one point in time, I you know, was getting a call like every other month that people were dying at my age. Uh, or I was in my early 20s at that time. So it was very prevalent for the area I was living in. Um, but luckily, my support system, you know, I was able to pull myself out of it. Uh, and that's when I first developed uh, or started looking for personal development. And it all started with just like basic YouTube videos of like, uh, you know, Bob Proctor, uh, nice. Les, um, you know, and, and all the other big names that were there, Tony Robbins at the time. And that sure. just kind of got me involved in personal development because I was really at the time just looking for something to fill the void. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's also when I started really getting into health and development there because, you know, I started doing CrossFit and things along those lines because once you eliminate an addiction, then you have to fill the void of all the things you were doing before because you spent so much time, you know, in that, in that bad state of mind for, for such a period of time. So that's when I first got involved in that. And that's, you know, that's where my building blocks of personal development came in uh, to eventually become, you know, uh, I would consider myself a successful real estate investor and now a successful real estate coach and business builder. That's awesome. I mean, you know, I think some of the people that teach the best are the ones that went through the worst of the times, you know, um, it's, it's relatable, it's understandable. And so I, I'm excited for my audience to start relating to you. But before we start talking about like what those either habits are or mindset changes that you um, are helping not only other people with, but helping yourself to do, uh, I would like to know, and I'd like our audience to know, where are you at in your real estate career today? Like, you know, just throw out some either resume type of things or just like, I want people to really understand exactly what you've been able to accomplish in these four short years. Sure. So I was able to hit in uh, over a hundred deals in under three years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the deals are uh, not wholesaling or, or some like quick flips or anything along those lines, but we're talking like terms deals like lease options, owner financing, sub two deals, uh, at least three to five plus years as far as terms go. Uh, and that's, and that's not just me doing it on my own. I mean, we have a fantastic team, but I was able to, you know, take the first step or be the leader in those, in those deals in order to get those accomplished. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for a number that, that, that'd be, that'd be what I'd have to say. That's, that's awesome. And I'm going to just encourage people to go back to the episode with your father-in-law, Chris, if they're wondering what in the world buying with terms means. Um, Chris did an awesome job of explaining exactly the things that you talked about, owner finance, subject to all that good stuff. Uh, but today, you know, we're focusing more on exactly what you just led to there, which is the mindset. So uh, let, let's kind of talk about what are things that you're doing on a daily basis today that are different than four years ago when you were not invested in building yourself, building your mind. Yeah. And, and I, I want to preface this with the audience too, cause you're going to probably catch a bunch of buzzwords, which, you know, all these things sound great because trust me, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I read a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I watch YouTube videos and a lot of these buzzwords are great. If you implement them. Sure. I mean, it's cool to say, Hey, yes, I, I think meditation is, is, should be a part of your daily, if not weekly routine, which it is part of mine. Uh, and a lot of people say, yeah, that's great. It sounds, it sounds good. Everybody else says meditation is good too, but unless you're involved in it, then you can't see, you know, the actual benefits that are associated with it, which I think, uh, completely as far as time frame, because I know meditation is something that may take time, uh, okay. out of your schedule. And you could say, I'm busy. I don't have time to meditate for 10 to 20 minutes a day. Uh, but if you look at it, as far as your return on investment on mm -hmm. yourself, it's far outweighs the 20 minutes a day that you have to do. So, um, so that, that'd be one thing. So I want to interrupt you there really quick. Cause I, I heard a great story a couple of years ago and it was a, uh, it's basically two wood choppers. I don't know if that's <laughs> the, the term that you use, but two, they're given like a challenge of who can chop down the most trees in an hour. And they're both given dull axes. And one said, well, I've only got an hour. I got to just, I got to accept the dull ax and just start going to work. And the other one took 20 minutes to sharpen his dull ax and then took the next 40 minutes to chop the trees down. And which one do you think ended up chopping more down? The one that sharpened the edges. Exactly. There you go. So just so we can talk about that meditation thing, if it's, 
truly what you're saying is worth taking 20 minutes and you're going to be more productive because of that, then why not do it? Yeah. I, I, I think it's extremely beneficial. And I think the science behind it clearly shows that it's beneficial. So that's, that's one thing that I would incorporate. And, uh, what I would what I would suggest is there isn't a specific time or day or night that works best either, in my opinion. I tried for so long to fit into my morning routine, but my morning routine, and we can go over that because I, I think anybody that we've interviewed on our podcast or I've heard has a morning routine that's very mm-hmm. successful. Um, but I tried so long to fit into my morning routine because I thought that's the way it needed to be done. And then I realized after I switched and I said, I'm going to do it at night before I go to bed. And that was easily able to fit that into my routine and then receive the benefits associated with it because I just had more time at night, you know, after my kids went to bed and all of that than I did in the morning when I was trying to get, you know, where, which is my peak productive time. Wow. So you're saying what in the morning, you just jump into the day and leave that morning routine for nighttime instead? No, I no, I hundred percent have a morning routine. Oh, I just okay. Able to fit meditation in there. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. My okay. morning routine is more of like a ramping up. So yep, I absolutely. I wake up in the morning and I go to the gym, which is one thing that I highly recommend that everybody does. If you're not like big into like, you know, a heavy routine, you go for a walk. It, there's science that proves that it gets your brain flowing, you get your juices going, and you think better more clearly if you work out in the morning or you do something physical. Um, And then as soon as I finish my, my workout, then I do two things. When I get to the office, I go through my uh, vision. So I have a be, do, have. Uh, So I don't know if your audience is familiar with that model, but first you become, and then you are able to do, and then you're able to have everything. Most of us, um, including myself, have this, um, have this like goals in the future where as soon as I have a million dollars, then I'm going to be happy. As soon as I have a million dollars, then I'm going to relax. But the truth is, as soon as you have that, then you're looking for the next thing to have and you haven't become what you, what you most want to become, which is happy or relaxed or successful. You first have to internally be that. And then eventually you'll actually have, uh, and be able to do everything you want in a much easier way. It's more flow. Okay. Trying to will everything. So pause right there. I understand the concept. Now, what does the exercise look like for that? Yeah. So I, I work on visionary things. So what I do is I, I, I write out what I want to be, do, and have. And I have this uh, Google Doc that I work off of every day. So the way I started it, um, and now it takes me probably like a half an hour to read through it and analyze. But when I first started, all I did was bullet point who I wanted to become, what I wanted to do, and then what I wanted to have. So if you even look at it from a real estate standpoint, who do I want to be? Well, I want to become a successful real estate investor. So I, and because a successful real estate investor thinks and acts and does things a certain way compared to an unsuccessful real estate investor. So I wrote what I wanted to be and then what I wanted to do. So let's say I wanted to travel the world. So so I would then start writing out every place I wanted to travel or do, um, or I wanted to start my real estate investment company. So that's what I want to do vocationally is I want to be a real estate investor. And then what I want to have. So maybe it's wealth. Uh, you're in this business to create wealth. So I want to have a million dollars. So first, so most of us start with, I want to have a million dollars instead of starting with, I want to be a successful real estate investor. Mm-hmm. How do they be, do, act? And then, and then I want to do certain activities. And then that leads me to being able to have the things I want. Absolutely. So in, in essence, because you're not focusing on the goal, which the goal is what you want to have, um, you, you kind of know that when you have that, then that's what you have wanted to become. And it's more, what, attainable? Is it, does, does it you just feel like when you, when you define those things, you know that you have reached this pinnacle or like what, what's the benefit of understanding all three of those uh, compared to just what you want to have? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So have goals tend to be more of like end goals, meaning like sure. that's, you've reached what, it. 
Yeah, and or that's what society tells you you need to have, not mm-hmm. necessarily what you want to have. Because truthfully, we all want to, let's say we all want to be millionaires for this example. Yeah, but what does a millionaire actually, like what does that do for you? What does a million dollars do for you? Does that allow you to, again, be more relaxed? Does that allow you to think or be more successful? Does that allow you to, you know, be happy? Like, is, is the end goal, is your real goal to be a millionaire or is it to be happy? So I just, I say to just, to journal and evaluate these things because uh, a lot of your, you know, end goals, they're probably not actually in line with who you really are. Um, which is probably for a whole nother subject, but that's why I think it's important. It's because you start to realize what actually you want. And by circling through it every day, you start to say, oh, well, maybe I don't necessarily have to have a million dollars. Maybe I just need like 300,000 a year because that allows me to travel and live the life that I want uh, without, you know, building a, you know, a hundred people company. So, cause then that comes with new things. Absolutely. Hey, Fearless Flipping community, we are taking a quick break from the podcast to talk about Airbnb. For those of you that don't know, I have built much of my residual income around Airbnb, despite a lot of other investors being really excited about long-term renters, I was not. I saw an opportunity with Airbnb to get to my goals faster, to get more cash flow, and to pay off my houses quicker too. So instead of being really happy like a lot of other investors are with 200 to 300 dollars of cash flow every single month i've turned my renters and rentals into over a thousand dollars on average of cash flow every single month so if you want to learn more about airbnb my systems um, where i pick my airbnbs how i communicate with guests maybe you've already got airbnb as a business on the side right now but you want to take it to the next level I am absolutely here to help you. You can book a free consultation with me about Airbnb. Learn more by booking at fearlessflipping.com forward slash consultation and you get me for 30 minutes for free. That's right, 30 minutes absolutely free. That's once again fearlessflipping.com forward slash consultation and I'm looking forward to helping you conquer Airbnb investing. Do you agree like, you know, the the Gary V's out there that are saying like, you know, hey, you just are doing things because you think you need to have them because that's what accepts you into society or, you know, like these real estate investors that go in and, and there's nothing wrong with it. If you truly are happy with getting a Bentley or getting a plane, like that's awesome. But do you believe that most people are getting that just because they think they're supposed to have that because that's what defines success? Uh, yeah, I would say that's, that's one thing. Um, see that that's why I think it's important to evaluate who you are and know yourself on a day to day basis, which being able to go through your vision of your be do has every single morning, puts you in that state where you may start out with a bullet point list and then eventually as you evolve, because we all evolve as, as who we are. So right now I got two young kids. Well, when I, when they're off and going to college, is, are my goals going to change? You know, is my lifestyle going to change? Like that, all those things fluctuate. So yeah. um, I think if you truly want a Bentley because you want a Bentley, then that's fantastic. If you want to be a billionaire because you want to be a billionaire because of all the doors that it opens and all that stuff, then I think that's fantastic. But at the end of the day, if you're not happy now, if you're not, then you're not going to be happy when you get a Bentley either. So, um, you know, that, there's that, that's that song. Uh, I forget what it's sung by. It's called Middle Child. It's a rap song, but it says, like, I hope you realize that, like, the money isn't going to eliminate the pain. So right. it's so important to realize that, like, if you can be successful in who you are now before you have those things, then when you have them, you're going to enjoy them 10 times more. But if you're if that's what you think is going to bring you enjoyment, then I think you've already lost. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. Okay. So you're, you're meditating at night, you're doing your morning routine. Um, anything else? Yep. So then uh, morning routine would then go with, uh, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of protecting my time. Uh, I think time management, especially as you, so let's say you start a real estate business, more than likely you have a full-time job which means that you have to be super productive of your time because now you're now you have this baby of a business mm-hmm. that you got to nurture and feed and change its diapers and wake up within the middle of the night uh, it takes time so be overly protective of your time 
and look at your priorities. So each and every Sunday I do, and Darren Hardy is really famous for this. Uh, he has a Sunday planning. So uh, every Sunday I look at my calendar for the next coming week and I look out and I say, is there anything in my calendar that did not move me towards my priorities? And if they don't move me towards my priorities, then I eliminate them off my calendar. Mm. And then I fill my calendar with things that directly move the needle every single week. So super protecting my time. So I, I do a check-in before I start my day. And then the first thing I do every day is I quote unquote eat the frog. I take my biggest thing that I need to do that day that's gonna move the needle. And I do it first thing in the morning. Uh, and then I don't take or do any other outbound type calls or busy work until like after nine or 10 in the morning. Okay, so I've got a question for you. I'm the kind of guy that if I've got a to-do list full of that one major thing and then all these small things, my mind works where like, if those small things are lingering, I need to either outsource them or I need to get them done myself right away because I'm like a numbers guy. I'm like, shoot, I have six little things to do and this one major thing. And so what I end up doing is I focusing on these six little things to, you know, get them done with. And then I focus on the major thing. And then what happens? Another five or six little things come up. And, and so this big thing just keeps getting pushed off. So how do you tackle that? How do you get past that? I, I don't look at the little things. I got to be, you got to be overly hyper-focused on your priorities which is that major thing that you need to accomplish. Because the way I look at it is like, great, you, you have to-do lists. We're always going to have to-do lists and they're always going to be fluctuating. But is that going to make a bigger difference in my life if I complete those to-do lists today or if I hit that major priority? Like, is what's going to move the needle forward? Because all that to-do list, in my opinion, if you have the ability to and the resources, should, should be exactly what you just said, which was delegated. Yeah. Just outsource it because if – you know, if those little things like you, as you elevate as a real estate investor and then as a CEO, then become the CEO of your company, as you evolve, those small things need to be outsourced. Absolutely. Cool. Um, any, anything else? Cause I do want to go back to one thing, but is there anything else that you do through your day? No, no. I That's think, uh, I think those are the major items that I think is important for you to cover. Cool. All right. So meditation, the morning routine, and then protecting your time, which I love that protecting your time piece. Um, I'm the kind of guy that I'm a planner. I think many, the, the majority of successful people are planning out their days. There's the few that can like just fly by the seat of their pants and attract really good things. But I think most people need to be planners if they're really going to build a business and build a following. Uh, but Meditation. I just need to ask really quickly. I should have asked this while we were talking about it, but it's just been in my head. What, what does meditation really look like? Like I think of a lot of people are probably sitting there thinking of like, you know, the finger to thumb index out, you know, yeah, right. legs crossed on a towel, looking out of the beach and you know, all um, that kind of stuff. Like yeah. what, what does meditation actually look like for you? For me, I, I like the guided meditations. Uh, you can find them on YouTube. You can use the calm app. There's a bunch of apps out there. I think they're real easy to get involved in with meditation. I'm not, you know, like a Yogananda or anything like that. Like that's, that's not me. I mm. literally just got involved in meditation over the last couple of years. And it's just more of my schedule is just so hectic between having a couple small kids, you know, being a husband, running multiple companies, um, you know, between that and, and, and everything else, and then helping people grow and scale their companies, mm -hmm. uh, you know, things just get, uh, and I'm type A, so it's like, go, go, go. So I just needed something to pull me back for a couple minutes. Uh, and I think if I just go through a guided meditation, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, like relaxing on the couch, I, I'm not even a person that sits up when I do it. I usually just throw my headphones. I go, I let the person walk me through my breathing activity. I lay on the couch in a dark room at like nine at night, right before I'm about to either journal or go to bed. Uh, and that's what it looks like. It's, it's real easy. Just follow, follow somebody else. Uh, and then if you get to a certain point where you're really you're more into it, then follow your own meditations. Cause you can do, there's plenty of people out there that teach you how to meditate on your own. That's good. That's real good. Um, Keep it simple. Always. If you want to implement something new into your routine, then keep it simple. Number one, but also, don't take everything we just talked about. Just pull one thing out of this exactly. and put it in there. And then revisit this, this talk in you know, six months from now. Once that's 
already in your routine. You don't think about it anymore. Absolutely. Well, I say it all the time. About 50% of the time, people don't know what in the world I'm saying, but how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Have you heard that one? Yes, I have. That's okay, a great, good. That's a great Sometimes saying. people look at me like I'm crazy when I bring that up. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a great saying. Uh, cool. Hey, what does life look like right now for Zach on a day to day basis versus when you weren't implementing these things into your life? I want to see what the difference is there. Uh, it comes down to one word, and that's clarity. Mm. I have clarity about where I'm going, where I am now, and where I'm going. Before I didn't, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, before, <laughs> I didn't have any sort of personal development background or anything like that. I didn't, you know, I, I grew up with a single mother. She was a, a cashier at Lowe's. Like these things weren't taught to me. I, I'm making it a point to teach these things to my kids, but these things weren't taught to me. I had to seek outside myself in order to figure these out. So uh, if these things weren't taught to you, then, uh, you know, hopefully this at least starts to bring you down the rabbit hole um, of that. It, it just started with me with basic YouTube videos when I was like at the gym or needing some sort of self-confidence. Uh, so I just listened to the top gurus and the top motivational speakers speak. And then eventually I went through it. Um, so by implementing these things into your life, it just brings clarity because I know myself better now, which means that I can certainly interact with the world a lot better. That's good. All right. I'm going to put you on the spot. You said that you have clarity and you know where you are and where you're going. So where are you and where are you going? Yeah, right now, um, you know, one of the top leaders and coaches of the, the smart real estate coach community, our, our wicked smart community, where we're going is uh, our major mission is 1500 transactions with mm -hmm. our associates by 2022. Um, and then from there, you know, my goal is just to constantly uh, help uh, millions of people around the country build and scale their businesses, um, primarily right now in real estate. That's awesome. So I just want people to, I, I knew you were going to have, without asking you this question before we got on there, I knew you were going to have some sort of attainable goal in that where you're going. And so what I just want people to get out of that is when you have clarity, you know exactly what you're going for, what it looks like. And you can feel it, touch it, because it's either uh, a defined destination or it's a numerical goal. And, and you mentioned those things. So that's really good. Thanks, Zach, for sharing that. Uh, now that was a perfect time for us to transition. How are you helping people? Um, what, what is the type of person that you're looking for? If our audience is listening, I want them to be able to hear like, hey, that's me. I'm raising my hand. And how can I get in contact with Zach and his team? Yeah, the, the people that we primarily work with and what we call our associates are those that are either green, that are looking to get involved in real estate, or are already involved in real estate and are looking to add an additional niche to their, to their uh, you know, or another feather in their hat. Because sure. uh, the truth is what we're, we're starting to see now is um, with wholesaling and flipping, um, we're starting to see that the markets are becoming extremely overcrowded. You know, thanks to like HDTV and the margins are getting smaller and, and along those lines, unless you're really dedicated, especially to wholesaling, to building out like a large, a large business. Cause you're going to be doing, you see the top people, they're doing like hundreds upon hundreds or thousands of transactions. Right. Uh, and I was actually able to meet a, a bunch of those at, uh, at note school, which run by Eddie speed. Um, and so a lot of people are, are, are moving into our niche because they're also looking for a good way to build a retirement or a good way to start building wealth now with you know, a lot lower of risk because the way we teach people how to buy and sell real estate is without using their own cash credit or asking investors for money. So that's why we primarily buy on lease options, owner financing and subject to uh, because there's a little barrier to entry because you don't, you're not putting up a bunch of cash. You're structuring deals with terms. And that way you can create uh, what we call our three paydays, which are the non-refundable deposit you collect from your buyer, the spread every month, and the uh, additional wealth that you create on the back end from the principal pay down and the premium. So really great opportunities to get involved in to be able to create great businesses when not large overhead uh, within our niche. So those are the two primarily uh, people that we work with. And we, we tend to see that um, our students or our associates, especially that come in at a high level, are looking to eventually go full time in real estate mm -hmm. because they're looking for that financial freedom, that time freedom, uh, and to be their own boss and create their own business. So, uh, if you're serious and you want to get involved in real estate or continue to build out a business, 
um, then we'd be the people that you'd be working with here because uh, we're, we're extremely ambitious. We're from New England, so we go really fast. Uh, if, if you want to grab on the coattails, we'd, we'd love to chat with you. Absolutely. All right. And, and I just need my audience to understand that, you know, the things that you just glazed over there, which we don't really have time to dive into. Again, they can go back to our interview with Chris Prefontaine from about a month ago. And it's not too good to be true. Like subject to owner finance, when Zach says getting into a deal for free or little or no money, I mean, it's, it's actually true. Uh, been sitting down with people here just locally in my backyard that do a ton of subject twos. And it's really like an amazing concept that I don't think enough people know about. And so it's really cool that now, um, you know, our, our fearless flipping audience has an opportunity to be able to connect with you, Zach. So how can they do that? Yeah, I think the best thing to do is I'd, I'd love to give away our Amazon bestselling book, or at least our second one, uh, which me, Chris, and my brother-in-law, Nick, co-authored. And you can just go to newrulesforfree.com. Uh, that's the new rules of real estate investing, 24 experts uh, give away their secrets. So new rules for free. Uh, this isn't an ebook. You can certainly download the ebook, but we'll send you a physical copy on us. No shipping, no handling. Happy to get it out to you. And in the meantime, while you're waiting, just go to smartrealestatecoach.com slash webinar. Uh, and that way you can dive into it. It's about a 15 minute webinar. We give away uh, a bunch of free gifts at the end of it. Plus you're going to have some really good tangible items, uh, and a good grasp of what we do, uh, within this real estate niche. Awesome. Hey, and we're going to have all that in the show notes. So everyone who's listening right now and thinking, wait, repeat that. Don't worry. We're going to have it in the show notes. I'll go ahead and repeat that as we're ending here and you'll be able to get connected there. But um, Zach, any last words for our audience? You've been a huge help today from a mindset standpoint. Anything else that you want to add there though? No, just reiterate that. Um, just take one item that we've talked about on this and implement it into your, your daily routine. And then later on, come back and revisit. So important, just those small little items that we talked about made a huge difference in my life. And I think they'll make a huge difference in your life. All right, Zach. Thanks so much for helping our audience to conquer real estate investing today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Show notes can be found at, you guessed it, fearlessflipping.com forward slash Zachary Beach. That's Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y-B-E-A-C-H. And Zachary talks about those three things that really help him to get started in his day. I would really suggest implementing those concepts. And uh, you know, when it comes down to it, we've got to get our mind right before we can ever get our skills right, before we can get our routine right, before we can get our tasks for the day right. We get so caught up in just doing, 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 progress, progress, progress. I'm a perfect example of that. If I wake up in the morning and I'm checking my phone right away, then I'm a slave to my phone for the rest of the day rather than being a proactive, um, really business owner, uh, owner of my mindset that can go out there and control exactly where my attention goes. So implement these things from Zachary and you too can conquer real estate investing. We'll see you next time.